Here we will identify structures from electron micrographs. First to be labelled here are the ribosomes, which you can identify as tiny black dots that would be present in the cytoplasm. Next you have the nucleoid region, which is lighter and irregularly shaped towards the middle of the cell. The cell wall is going to be a boundary or a dark line that's closest to the outside of the cell. The cytoplasm is the liquid portion of the cell containing the ribosomes or those black dots, so it's going to be darker than the nucleoid region but lighter than the ribosomes. And lastly, on this image, you have the plasma membrane, which is going to be another boundary or line, but it's going to be found on the inside of the cell wall, so not to be confused with the cell wall label. Now on this image, we can clearly see the pili and the flagellum. The flagellum is the longer whip-like appendages that you see coming out of the end, while the pili are the shorter hair-like appendages you see around the sides. Here we will identify eukaryotic cell structures from an electron micrograph. First off, you can differentiate between the smooth endoplasmic reticulum and the rough endoplasmic reticulum because although both of them are networks of tubules I'm showing you here in orange, the rough endoplasmic reticulum is associated with ribosomes, which I'm highlighting here in red. They're present on the electron micrograph as little black dots. In this image, we can once again identify the region of the rough endoplasmic reticulum by its association with ribosomes, but the larger organelle present here is the mitochondrion. We can see here the lines that we previously represented on our diagram, the internal compartments formed by the inner membrane of the mitochondrion. This next image serves to show us the relative sizes of the nucleus to the mitochondria labelled M and the rough endoplasmic reticulum RER. You can see how much bigger the nucleus is than the latter two. Here to be clear I'm distinguishing between the mitochondria which I'm circling around in orange labelled with an M, the rough endoplasmic reticulum RER also in orange and I'm circling around the nucleus in red. Zooming in, it is once again possible to identify the mitochondria by the lines on the inside formed by the inner membrane. Here we are able to identify the Golgi apparatus by its curved shape and by the vesicles I'm circling in blue at the end of the tubules. We can also identify the lysosomes which I'm circling in red and relatively these are a little larger than the Golgi apparatus. This final image serves to show the relative sizes of the organelles within a eukaryotic cell. So you have the large nucleus. The Golgi apparatus is harder to see here but would have that curved structure with the vesicles at the end. The plasma membrane going all the way around the outside and containing the organelles in the cell. The mitochondria, you see the lines formed by the internal membrane on the inside. And the lysosome is a smaller circular structure. While eukaryotic cells share the same organelles, the abundance of these organelles within the cells can give us a clue as to what the cells are specialised to do. For example, in this electron micrograph, we see an abundance of rough endoplasmic reticulum, and we know that this organelle is used in protein synthesis. Therefore, this cell must be specialised in producing a large number of proteins. In addition, the zymogen granules seen here are a real clue to us because these are specialised storage organelles that are found in the exocrine pancreas and they allow the sorting, packaging and regulated secretion of digestive enzymes. We can deduce therefore that this cell is in fact an exocrine gland cell of the pancreas. Its function is to produce proteins such as digestive enzymes that are secreted into the small intestine and insulin, a hormone that's secreted directly into the bloodstream. In this electron micrograph, as well as seeing the nucleus and mitochondria, we see a significant number of chloroplasts. Now the chloroplast is the site of photosynthesis and this suggests that this cell is a mesophyll cell from a plant's leaf. Therefore, the function of this cell would be to carry out photosynthesis for the plant in order to produce glucose.